What's up, family? What's up, family? Happy Friday to everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Spontaneous Fridays with Pastor Jamal Rising Ground Church. Man, I'm going to jump right in here because this is kind of near and dear to me in this ways, in this specific way. Um, first, God, I just pray, Father, that you would just, you would just, man, touch ears, touch ears, Lord God. Let your spirit, Lord God, fall on these ears fresh and anew fresh and anew in jesus name okay all right people um so two covenants two ways to live but one actual door two covenants two ways to live but one actual door so we know we talk about two covenants we're talking about the old covenant and the new covenant adam and jesus adam and jesus come on so adam Covenant number one, Adam's covenant was a covenant of law initiated because of sin. It was started because of sin. If sin never entered the world, there would be no need for a covenant. But because of that, God has to come in and create a plan so, so he don't just blow up everything, you know. So it was initiated because of sin, covenant number one. This covenant was made up of a lot of do's and don'ts, commandments, um, a lot of work-oriented commissions. You know what I mean? Meaning like, you know what I mean? That you, you had to do this in order for God to do, do this. You had to carry this, this way. You had to do that, 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 you know, so again, so, so God's wrath wouldn't be, you know, uh, uh, poured out. You know what I mean? So with the old covenant, we learn to live righteously. It was still righteous. We learned to live uh, righteously God's way by rigorous and meticulous beliefs, behaviors, and systems. Again, we learn to live righteously. We learn to live God's way by rigorous and meticulous beliefs, behaviors, and systems. Now, I know all of us have read the Old Testament. A lot of us have, and a lot of us haven't. You know, you could, you could talk to somebody about it. <laughs> but you have, you know, you, you, you get to see the, the really seriousness of God even as it, as it relates to, you know, his wrath, man, because a lot of people were like, you know, why did God do this? Why is God, if God's such a good guy, why is this? You know, and there's a lot of things to talk about that. The, the thing that I just kind of like to say about those kind of things are just simply God is perfection. God knows perfectness. There's nothing that God created that is wrong. But if we choose to go out of alignment with what God created the way that he did it, then I mean, you know, the result is, is what the result is. You know, thank God that his mercy came up with another plan, right? So Jesus, enter in Jesus. Jesus the Christ, Christ Jesus, his covenant is known as the new covenant, which we have all come to understand and believe to be a better covenant. Now, why? Well, probably first this covenant does away with the rigorous legalism that the first covenant was created with its fulfillment rests solely on the nature and oneness of God in the driver's seat, you know, God's grace and mercy. Um, you know, we don't, we no longer have to live under that, under, under those really, man, hard things, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard for us to uh, live <laughs> without sinning, you know, and with, without having to, to, to do uh, the things that God had and put in place for so that we wouldn't be destroyed in the Old Testament. It's hard for us, you know, so it's like, you know, imagine if we had to still live under that thing. So, you know, these two covenants, but OK, OK, this is this is what I really want to hit home. This is this is a short message, but it's so serious. These two covenants are less about legal agreements and more about living from God's perfect mind, order, and method. When we talk about identity, knowing and operating from your true God identity can only be done by operating under the new covenant, which simply means to fully embrace, accept, and take on the example that Christ Jesus set for us by how he suggested that we that we live and i say suggested because a lot of us have not accepted what god what christ jesus was pointing at um when he was pointing us to what he was showing 
us that we are. We don't we haven't really fully accepted that yet. And one of the major reasons are or is is because we're still trying to live under the old covenant. We got one foot in the new covenant, one foot in the old covenant. This is dualism. This is duality. This is double mindedness where we're either going to live under Adam's system, which, again, was instituted because of sin. And it, it brought in all of the, the, the sacrificing and all of these 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 rigorous things, man. Or we're going to live by what Jesus set in motion. You know, again, we talk about grace and mercy. We don't talk about um, licensing to sin or whatever. We talk about, no, this is God's plan because the other one wasn't going to work. I mean, uh, eventually the whole world, you know what I mean? The world got destroyed in the first place. You know what I mean? So uh, we have to, we got to come to grips, man, what God is offering us. Our identity, either you're going to live in the new and we talk about this all the time we say you know i'm the, the new covenant is great grace and mercy and we talk about these things but we haven't allowed the spirit of god to completely reveal to us what this covenant really is saying what is this covenant really pointing at it's pointing simply this is how god lives this is not only how god lives this is how god has set in motion for you to live you know, we don't, we don't, we never experience the fullness of what God has given us because again, we got one foot in and one foot out. And we think that that's even valid because we think even living under the old covenant is valid, but it's not because the old covenant was created because of the fall. But then here comes Jesus and he comes and, and rearranges and redoes and, and sets everything in, in, a, in a better, better direction in a better direction but we got to grasp who we are we got to we can't we can't truly fully even um live under this new covenant without being and living by the idea and the identity of who we truly are this is something that's going to be talked about forever i mean until until it's time to go because we got to we have to know we have to accept it we have to believe it. I'll say this again in, in this way. I've said it this way before, but I'll say it again. Again, when Jesus was, when he was um, talking to the mass group of his disciples and he said, you know, you have to eat of my flesh and drink my blood. And they're like, well, no, we're gone. And, and you know, they left and Jesus was like, well, will you guys leave me too? The, the other 12, you know, will you leave me too? And then he says, Peter says, well, no, who, who do we, who, who else has the truth? But the point is, the point is when Jesus says, drink my blood and eat my flesh again he's just telling you that you have to be courageous enough to believe what i really am showing you who you truly are you can't you can't allow not only your salvation but your identity to hinge on who do you, who you think i am you you give we give everything over to jesus in this way and it's not supposed to be done that way if God put it in motion, if God wants you to know something about who you are, but you continually to deny it because of fear of accepting it, because you, if one person can get it, then a billion people can, can get it because we all are under the same authority. We all have available to us the spirit and the power of God. We just have to allow God to open us up, allow the new wine to come in, to reveal deeper truths to us so we can get to where we're going, man. You know, we have we have a covenant where God is instructing us what we can and can't do, what we can and can't eat. Then we have a covenant where a new covenant where Jesus comes in and Jesus doesn't talk about that. And even remember um, when he ascended and um, I think it was Cornelius's house and it was the dream and it was all of these different animals on the on this blanket and everything. And and, you know, uh, Peter was like, well, we don't we're Jewish. We don't eat this stuff. And God's like, no, that's not this. This has nothing to do with, with that. So here you have a new covenant where God is not really talking about what you can and can't do per se, especially as it relates to things that, that we eat. Um, and and especially uh, uh, before Jesus died, because I know Jesus, Jesus also says when he was when he was walking, he says, you know, yeah, you continue to obey the laws 
Why? Because he hasn't, he hadn't ascended yet. So it wasn't, it wasn't really established until he, he was, he had ascended. So they still had to, to, to walk out the old covenant. They were still under the old covenant. But the, the, what I'm saying is you have two distinct pictures of what, uh, you, you could and couldn't do. And then here's this one and says, you can, you are, I am. So we live still under, again, an old system because we even believe that we can and we can't do certain things. And on, we only believe that because it was pointed out to us through an old covenant ideology or an old covenant mindset. So, and again, that the old covenant was what was right when it was right. But then Jesus comes along and, and he does this. So this is, a, again, a picture of what it looks like to have one foot in and one foot out. And when you have one foot in and one foot out, then you get no results. That's all I got, y'all. I hope it made sense. I pray it made sense. I know it made sense. Bless y'all, Pastor Jamal Rising Ground Church. Spontaneous Fridays. New covenant. New covenant. Act like it. Talk to you. Peace.